Psalm uh, 32, please. I want to read that uh, in the Amplified Version. Um, and it blessed me. It's blessed, blessed me so much. This is basically, I'm, I'm sharing only for a few minutes. And um, I'm sharing a testimony. Blessed, happy, fortunate, to be envied. That's what blessed mean. Happy, fortunate, to be envied is he who has forgiveness of his transgression continually exercised upon him. Whoa. His forgiveness of his transgression continually exercised upon him whose sin is covered. Are we blessed? Yeah. We are blessed. Um, that is the blood of Jesus continuously being effective, working in our lives. He has blessed us. He has saved us, forgave us. Um, we are not sinless, like Pastor Steve said. We're not sinless, but we do definitely sin less. And, and, you know, and when we do and we repent, the same blood of Jesus is continuously uh, cleansing us in Jesus' name. Amazing. Verse 3. When I kept, no, verse 2. Blessed, blessed, which is happy fortunate to be envied is the man to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Amen. When I kept silence, now listen to this, when I kept silence before I confessed, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day long. You, can you relate with that? For the day and night your hand, or oh, displeasure, was heavy upon me. My moisture was turned into the drought of summer. Sila. Pause and calmly think of that. That's what it means. Sila. Did you wonder what Sila means? Number five. I acknowledge my sin to you. So he was there, that heaviness, couldn't sleep, obviously sweating in the night, felt God far. But then verse 5, I acknowledged my sin to you and my iniquity. I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, continually unfolding the past till all is told. Ooh, isn't that powerful? Continually unfolding the past till all is told. So we don't live in the past, but we must bring the past under the blood of Jesus. And we must confess it and we must deal with it. Because you can't just quickly brush it off. The blood of Jesus forgave me and that's it. You have to deal with that. Every sin in our lives has consequences. And there is many people who are still in Christ are still bound because they haven't dealt with the sins of the past. Amen. So when, when a, obviously after you have dealt with those sins, after you have confessed and you have repented from those sins and you have turned away from those sins, if the enemy who delights in bringing your sins back into mind, of course, get away from me. I dealt with that. It's under the blood of Jesus. I'm not focusing in the past. But I can't say I'm not thinking about the past because that actually is a psychology. That's what psychology does. And you know what? It, many people at old age suffer of dementia or Alzheimer's or things like that where they, uh, they go, I know somebody that I love that is going through that, going, uh, rehearsing things when they're young. They think they're young. They think they, they, their mind is back in time. Isn't that sad? Yes. 
And you know what that is. I remember Dr. Dyson coming one time and dealing uh, and talking about this subject. And he says, these are files in our mind that we haven't dealt with and is being stored and put there. And of course, at a time in our lives, we have to deal with it. You can't just keep on hiding it in the back of your mind. It has to come. And I, I wanna, uh, this is also not to expose my father-in-law, but we, we preached, uh, he's going to be with the Lord now, but we, we, my husband preached uh, to him uh, the gospel many times and trying to lead him to Christ many times. And, and for many, many, many years, we, we seem to have not seen any fruit or any change or anything like that. But the last few years before he died, um, something was happening. Something was, he's, he was responding, he was praying. And you know, and so we were getting happy. And then we had to go to Argentina. Uh, and then it was very close to his death, but we couldn't cancel those t tickets and we lived, left it in God's hands and we went to Argentina. But while we are in Argentina, we get the phone calls that he's very, very sick. He's taken into hospital and this is it. Now only a few hours, a few days, and they were sure he was gonna die. And we began to pray and pray and pray, Lord, keep him alive until we come back and see him. Um, and still, Lord, you know, wanted in our hearts to know that he was saved. That because before it was like, yeah, he's responding, but you're still not sure. And Lord, it is really said, we have to see him one more time. We have to pray for him one more time. We have to make sure that he is going to glory with Jesus. Keep him alive. And so we went back, we came back. And, and in the meantime, we, the communication with the sisters, and you, then, then suddenly we get one phone call saying, that has gone crazy. He is telling us things he's done in the past. He's confessing his sins. He's saying, I've done this and I slept with that and da 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 da. And we're saying, Dad, don't worry about that. Don't worry. And we were like, Wow. The Lord is bringing him to that place of confessing all the sins. God's mercy. God's mercy. You can't leave it to the end. Because you don't know how long you have. It's not like I'm too embarrassed to say it. At the deathbed, I will confess it. You can't do that. Because if you know it now, you have to act right now. So we came back. We saw him. Uh, and, and he was so very weak. And the next day, we came back to the hospital. And this time he was unconscious and we could not wake him up. We were shaking him, we were talking to him, nothing. He was not responding. And then at the end, my husband said, okay, we're gonna go now, but I wanna read out loud Psalm 23. Yes, yes. And I want you to repeat after me. And he opened his Bible and began to read. He was talking to me and my sister-in-law. The Lord is my shepherd. And we were saying, the both of us, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall know what. And then suddenly, we began to see the face of my father-in-law with, with pneumonia. He had the mask, the oxygen mask. And behind the mask, I could see with all of his strength, he's trying to open his eyes and repeating, the Lord is my shepherd. Oh. Wow, I couldn't, couldn't say anymore. I was so overwhelmed that thinking his spirit was responding. Physically, he, he didn't have the strength. He couldn't even greet us. But as soon as he heard the word of God, he was saying, how amazing is that? So we gave God the praise and the next day or that night, that same night he died and um, but we were, thank you, Lord. You're so faithful. Isn't God faithful? Amen. God is so faithful. So to acknowledge the sin, to deal, to deal with the things of the past. Amen? Where did I finish here? I acknowledge my sin. 
I will confess my transgression to the Lord continually, unfolding the past till all is told. You know that after many years of being a Christian, suddenly I will remember things of that I did. Like, for example, I remember my mom taking us as a family, the children, to a, to a curandera. Those who speak Spanish will know that. <laughs> curandera, which is a witch doctor. And, and so whenever we were unwell, I felt I don't feel well. Or oh, somebody has done a spell on you, something's wrong with you. Let's take you to this lady who breaks the spells. How stupid it is, superstitious. But you know, people believe that and people till today do that. And so we will go to the house of this lady and she will have a red ribbon and uh, do the signs and get the <laughs> ribbon shorter, 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 and then start again. <laughs> and then that was it, money, and that's it, we're fixed. Okay? <laughs> and every so often we will visit the house of this lady for her to do that. And then we were done. How many of you done that? Yeah? Too embarrassed to do it? Well, you know what? I was a little girl. I had no choice, apparently. Did I? Did I have a choice? Could I choose not to go? You know what? I said, Lord, I repent. I don't blame my parents. They didn't know what they were doing. They weren't saved. But I take responsibility and I repent for that. For going like a good girl and doing everything they told me to do. I could have had a big tantrum. I could have shout. I could have kicked the lady and said, you are not touching me. But I didn't. I just took it. So Lord, forgive me and cleanse me and break the power of all witchcraft, of all spell, of all religion, of all nonsense in my life. Amen? Amen. Then I'll be okay. Then it'll be another season where, I mean, when I came to Christ, I have confessed all my sins. But it seems like sometimes the, the Holy Spirit brings you to a deeper place of really unfolding the past. How many times, because I went to a, a Catholic school, I bowed down and, uh, uh, to statues. Lord, I take responsibility. And forgive me, I repent of a bind before such as. I was Again, I was a little girl from five. I was going there. You had to do it. You are in school. But Lord, I repent. Amen. I confess my transgression. Then you instantly forgave me the guilt and iniquity of my sin. Say it with me. Then you instantly forgave me the guilt and iniquity of my sin. Immediately. When I confess my sin, when I take responsibility, when I acknowledge I was at fault, Lord immediately he forgives. He is so amazing. And you feel forgiven. Thank you, Lord. It's not a big deal. You don't have to carry guilt for years and years and years. Instantly, you can be forgiven. Amen. Sila, which is, means pause and calmly think of that. For this forgiveness, let everyone who is godly pray, pray to you in the time when you may be found. This is the time to find Jesus. This is the time to find forgiveness. After you die, it's not a time. Surely when the great waters of trial overflow, they shall not reach the spirit in him. Amen. And this is my favorite verse. 
you are a hiding place for me. You, Lord, preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Wonderful. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Did you know that? You can imagine while you're in trouble, he's surrounding you with shouts, with songs on the lip of deliverance. And I was thinking this morning as I'm reading this verse, what is the song of deliverance that he's singing over me right now? What is the song of deliverance? That he's and the shout of deliverance that he's singing over us. You know what? If you really get into the spirit, maybe you can start uttering with your own mouth and singing what he is singing. And you can start singing and shouting what he's saying. Wow, I got so excited about that. How many times we are not yet finding him, our hiding place and our refuge, and then singing what he's singing. Gee, that beautiful song, I'll go where you go, I'll say what you say, I pray what you pray. Well, let's just add, let's sing what you sing. Because they sing that the songs that he sings over me, songs of deliverance. And when I've been the most heaviest in my life, and I begin to focus in him, and I begin to find him as my refuge and my hiding place, and I something begins to happen in me, in my spirit that gets happy, and then I become like a crazy woman. I don't care that label, crazy woman. And I begin to, yes, Lord, hallelujah. Jesus is the winning man or whatever song that he's singing over me. And I begin to sing it and find the deliverance in the Lord. Amen. But if you are going to go and feel a victim and trying to deal with that heaviness on your own and waste time, well, it's not going to be any solution. But if we quickly get into the hiding place and begin to sing what he's singing over us, then we will find deliverance. Amen? Oof. I thought you'd be more excited than that. I got me so excited. It got me so excited. Singing, yeah, the privilege of singing, those stupid people, Oh, I'm singing with Beyonce. I'm singing with thee. Something. Oh, what a pri- That's not privilege. We are singing with the Almighty God together a song of deliverance. I'm singing it with Him. And it's not just a song, He's so generous. Songs of deliverance. And not just songs, amplifies says shouts. <laughs> like the walls of Jericho, they had to shout. I, the Lord, will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like the horse or the mule who lacks understanding. Say with me, I will not be like the horse or the mule who lacks understanding, which must have their mouth held firm with bits and bridle, bridle, or else they will not come with you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but he who trusts in, relies on, confidently leans on the Lord shall be compassed about with mercy and with loving kindness. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice you uncompromisingly righteous. You who are upright and in right standing with him because of the blood of Jesus. Shout for joy, 
all you upright in heart. Hallelujah. 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 We can continue our life. I'm just waiting for my husband when he comes back. It's his turn. But we can continue our lives either walking with guilt and oppression and heaviness and depression and guiltiness or worthlessness. Or we can hide in Christ and get sing with him the songs of deliverance and shouting and right standing with God. What are we going to choose? Amen? Amen. And just finish with the one little testimony. While we were in Dubai, I was going through a time of really heaviness in my heart because a, a one of my cousins died. She was only 26 years old and had left two little girls, an eight-year-old and a two-year-old. She was a mom. And with her husband had a mot motorbike accident, uh, obviously drunk after a nightclub, uh, hit the tree. She died instantly. And he was very uh, in intensive care, in uh, care. So that news was a shock for all the family. I didn't know her personally, but we became very friendly on Facebook. And she seems such a full of life, as they call the people uh, today. Um, and anyway, uh, so I was so heavy of heart because they were not Christians. Um, so anyway, but you know, you deal with it. You think you deal with it. And so we went uh, with my husband to spend those uh, few days together. And so we left the Sunday. But on, it was Wednesday morning, and I still have this heaviness, that sadness in my spirit. And my husband said, you are still grieving the death of your cousin. Yes. And uh, so, um, OK. Um, I didn't say anything. But then at one point, I, and I just felt so this sadness. And I share, we were, we were there, we had no meetings, but it was so wonderful to share the gospel with every person in the place that were mostly Filipinos, Indians. And for us, that's no work. For us, that's, that's lovely, that's pleasure to speak to them and lead them to Jesus and the gospel and such lovely people. And one day my husband was in the sun, I don't like sun, so I spoke to one of the attendees there, Gabriel, uh, from the Philippines. And I began to speak to him, you know, it's all, it was all crazy, really. It's a random woman, strange, you don't know her, and suddenly, do you know Jesus? And can I tell you about Jesus? And, and I share my testimony, and as I'm sharing the testimony to him, I break down, and I'm crying, and I can't even speak. Um, I mean, I know I cry here in the pulpit many times, but not one-to-one -one sharing the gospel. That was the first time. And I was feeling a bit embarrassed, but I was so overwhelmed that Jesus died on that cross to forgive my sins and make me a new creation. That's why I was crying. Wow, Jesus. You did that for me as I'm sharing the gospel with him. And then I did say to him, my cousin has died. Um, and you know. Anyway, so I spoke to him and I, I prayed for him because he wanted to receive Jesus. And I prayed for him and he was, he was not crying or anything. He seems all together. But I'm like a mess. <laughs> and I got, and the whole morning, I just saw overwhelmed and crying so much Jesus what you have done for me and it and it just dawned on me and I say thank you Lord that it must be also one of the reasons you want us to share the gospel because as we do that is so fresh it renew that that love for you of what you have done for our lives really uh, and that is why, because you think you know what he's done until you feel it afresh. Wow, Lord. Wow. But then that, you know, then I stop and I say, okay, my husband says I may have a spirit of grief upon me, so I don't want it. 
If it's not from the Lord, I don't want it. Amen. People take lightly today the things. Oh, it's not too bad. No. no. We have to be ruthless. Sin, we can't play around with sin. Any oppression from the enemy, we can't play around. We have to be free in the name of Jesus. So I said right there where I was in the swimming pool, in the name of Jesus, right now, I command all spirit of grief upon my life to be broken now in Jesus' name. And I receive the comfort and the healing of the Holy Spirit. And by the way, I also break that spirit over my mom and over this and over that and all the people I thought they were going through the same thing. Guess what happened? It was gone. Of course. Of course it was gone. Can you give him a clap of praise?